In this video, you're gonna learn how to handle errors inside of your callback functions. Because as you might guess, things don't always go as planned. For example, the current version of the app has a few really big flaws. If I try to fetch weather using node app.js with the A flag for a zip that doesn't exist, like 0000, the program crashes, which is a really big problem. It's going off, it's fetching the data, Eventually that data is gonna come back and we get an error. It's trying to fetch properties that don't exist. Body results zero dot formatted address is not a real property. And this is a big problem. Our current callback, it expects everything went as planned. It doesn't care about the error object, doesn't look at response codes. It just starts printing the data that it wants. This is the happy path, but in real world node apps, we have to handle errors as well. Otherwise the applications are gonna become really useless and a user can get super frustrated when things don't seem to be working as expected. In order to do this, we're gonna add a set of if else statements inside of the callback. This is gonna let us check certain properties to determine whether or not this call the one to this URL should be considered a success or a failure. For example, if the response code is a 404, we might wanna consider that a failure and we're probably gonna to wanna to do something other than trying to print the address, latitude, and longitude. If everything went well though, this is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. There are two types of errors that we're gonna worry about right now. That's gonna be machine errors, things like being unable to connect to a network. And these are usually gonna show up in the error object and then errors coming from the other server, the Google server. This could be something like an invalid address or anything else. In order to get started, let's take a look at what can happen when we pass bad data to the Google API. To view what actually comes back in a call like this, where we have an invalid address, I'm gonna head over to the browser and pull up that URL we used in the past. I have it saved right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the address we used previously from the browser history, type in 00, 000, hit enter, and right here you can see what comes back. We get our results array, but there's no results. And we have the status. The status says zero results. And this is the kind of information that's really important to track down. We can use the status text value to determine whether or not the request was successful. If we pass in a real zip code like 19147, which is Philadelphia, we're gonna get our results back. And down below, the status is gonna get set equal to okay. We can use this to determine that things went well. Between the status property and the error object, which we have over inside of Atom, we can determine what exactly to do inside of the callback. The first thing we're gonna do is add an if statement, checking if the error object exists. This is gonna run the code inside of this code block if the error object exists. If it doesn't, fine. We'll move on to the next else if statement, which we'll write in just a moment. If there is an error for the moment, all we're gonna do is console.log a message to the screen. Something like unable to connect to Google servers. Perfect. This is gonna let the user know that we were unable to connect to the user servers, not that something went wrong with their data like the address was invalid. This is what's gonna be inside of the error object. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is add an else if statement and inside of the condition, we're gonna check that status property. If the status property is zero results, which it was for the zip code 00000, we wanna do something other than trying to print the address. Right here, status equals zero results. Inside of our conditional in Atom, we can check just that. If the body.status triple equals zero underscore results. If that's the case, we're gonna print a different message other than unable to connect to the Google servers. For this one, we can use console.log to print unable to find that address. This lets the user know that it wasn't a problem with the connection, we were just unable to find the address they provided and they should try with something else. I'm gonna add an E and address to fix that typo, perfect. Now we have error handling for those system errors like being unable to connect to the Google servers and for errors with the input. In this case, we're unable to find a location for that address. And this is fantastic. We have both of our errors handled. 
Now this body status property that shows up here, this is not gonna be on every API. This is specific to the Google Geocode API. When you explore a new API, it's important to try out all sorts of data, good data, like a real address, and bad data, like an invalid zip code, to see exactly what properties you can use to determine whether or not the request was successful or if it failed. In this case, if the status is zero results, we know the request failed and we can act accordingly. Back inside of Adam, we can now go on to add our last else if clause, if things went well. And this is gonna be your challenge for the video. I want you to add the else if clause, checking if the body status property equals okay. If it does, you can go ahead and run these three lines inside of the code block. If it doesn't, these lines shouldn't run because the code block is not gonna execute. And then I want you to test things out over inside of the terminal. Try to fetch the address of 0000 and make sure that instead of the program crashing, you get our error message printing to the screen. Then you can go ahead and mess this URL up by removing some of the important characters. Try again and make sure this time you get unable to connect to the Google servers. And last but not least, see what happens when you enter a valid address. Make sure our three console log statements still execute. Take a moment, add that else clause, test things out, and when you're done, go ahead and click play. Hopefully that didn't cause you too much trouble. To get started, we're gonna add that else if statement, and inside of the condition, we're gonna check if body status is okay. Body dot status, checking if it equals, using triple equals, okay. If it is okay, then we're gonna simply take these lines and move them right here. If it is okay, we're gonna run those three console.log statements. I'm gonna add a missing semicolon onto that last console.log. And now we have a request that handles errors really well. If anything goes wrong, we have a special message for it. And if things go right, we print exactly what the user expects, the address, the latitude, and the longitude. To test this over inside of the terminal, I'm gonna start by rerunning the command with an address that's invalid. When I run this command, you can see that unable to find address prints to the screen, and that is fantastic. Instead of the program crashing, printing a bunch of errors, we simply have a little message printing to the screen. This is because the code here that tried to access those properties that didn't exist no longer runs because this condition gets caught and we simply print the message to the screen. Now I also wanna test that the first message prints when it should. I'm gonna delete the S and the dot from the URL, save the file, then I'm gonna go ahead and rerun the previous command. This time around, you can see unable to connect to Google servers prints to the screen just like it should. Now I can test the final thing by first readjusting the URL to make it correct, and then fetching a valid address from the terminal. I'm gonna use the app node app.js setting address equal to 08822, which is a zip code in New Jersey. When I run this command, we do indeed get our formatted address for Flemington, New Jersey with the zip code and the state, and we have our latitude and longitude right here. This is fantastic. We now have a complete error handling model. To quickly recap what we did, we simply added else if statements inside of the callback. Callbacks are just one function. So in order to figure out if things went well or if things didn't go well, we have to use else if statements. This lets us do different things, like print different messages, depending on whether or not we perceive the request to have gone well. For example, when we make a request to Google providing a address that has problems, in this case there's zero results, the error object is not gonna get populated because it's not technically an error in terms of what request thinks an error is. It's actually in the response object, which is why we have to use body.status in order to check this error. In this case, we have a zero results status. That is indeed an error and we act accordingly. That is it for this one. We now have error handling in place. We handle system errors, Google server errors, and we have our success case. In the next video, we're gonna be moving this into a separate file and abstracting a lot of the details. We'll talk about what that means and why it's important next. So stay tuned, I will see you then.